Was there a real Dr. Frankenstein? Yes, there was, and his name was Giovanni Aldini, and he actually managed to make corpses move with electricity. However, the gruesome nature of his experiments obscured the fact that he was an amazing scientist who revolutionized biology and medicine all in the name of familial love. Ready for both a ghoulish and an inspirational story? Let's go! Electricity, 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 electricity. On January 18, 1803, a man named George Foster was put to death for drowning his estranged wife and one of their children. After he was hung for his crimes, his lifeless body was taken to a public operating theater, theater where an Italian physicist named Giovanni Aldini experimented with the corpse. Aldini was a galvanist, a person who believed that animal electricity is what makes animals alive, and that certain procedures could release this electricity even when the animal or person was dead. And Aldini proceeded to use the battery to get the dead man's jaw to shake and even opened his left eye. The highlight, so to speak, was that Aldini stuck one electrified probe in the corpse's ear, another one in his anus, and made his legs kiss, kick and his right hand clench and pump in the air. The warden of Newgate Prison recorded that several people who saw this experiment thought Foster was on the eve of being restored to life. He also claimed these demonstrations were so dramatic and disturbing that it caused the church usher to, quote, die of fright after he went home. Take that with a grain of salt. Anyway, why was Aldini probing a corpse in the first place? It has to do with his family. Aldini's uncle was a doctor and anatomy professor named Luigi Galvani, who was assisted by his wife, Lucia. When Aldini was in college, he learned that his aunt and uncle had accidentally discovered that if a decapitated skin frog was touched with an electrified probe, it would jump like it was alive. As soon as he graduated, Aldini joined them, and they diligently electrocuted every animal in sight. They discovered that all animals would respond physically to electricity, although frog legs seemed to have the greatest effect. They weren't the first to notice that electricity makes animals jump, but they were first to theorize that electricity is how muscles and nerves normally function. They didn't stop there. They also moved their frogs outside to see if the frogs would jump in a thunderstorm in the same manner they did by an artificial spark. This was around 40 years after Benjamin Franklin, demonstrated lightning was electric, so they were not surprised to find the frog jumped theatrically in thunderstorms. However, something else happened that was truly unexpected. Sometimes the frog legs would jump on a clear day with no static electricity involved at all. What was going on? They realized that convulsions had nothing to do with the weather. It had to do with an outdoor gate. See, they'd hooked the frogs on iron railings surrounding the garden and use copper hooks to transport the frogs. It was this combination, the iron and the copper, that caused the frog to shake. When they took the frog inside, they could make a frog dance by just placing a piece of copper and iron on a dead frog's leg. Crazy, huh? This is a major find. Putting both copper and iron into a frog's body produces electricity with no static electricity or thunderstorms in sight. In the middle of all this exciting research, Lucia Galvani fell very ill, and despite Luigi's devoted care, she died from complications from her asthma in 1788. As a result, Luigi Galvani did not publish his work until 1791. In this paper, Galvani postulated that all animals have what he called animal electricity inside them, that is what makes them and us alive. Galvani made the spark of life, literal. Imagine their dismay when one year later, Alessandro Volta, Europe's premier electrical scientist, published a paper that claimed that animal electricity was bunk. Volta had found that two different metals would work to electrify a live frog, and he decided that the electricity came from the dissimilar metals, not the frog. Volta was a loud, boisterous man who must have been incensed that a mere doctor and anatomist had made the most important electrical discovery of all time. Galvani didn't want to respond. He was a quiet, soft-spoken, religious man who did not look conflict, and he was also still mourning his wife's passing. Aldini, however, was raring for a fight, especially after Galvani had just nursed him through an illness. This is how Aldini described it. Galvani was treating me for a deadly fever. After having escaped, thanks to his generous care and efforts, a nearly unavoidable death, 
I started to work zealously to bring support to a doctrine I trusted, despite the attacks under which it came. I felt at ease to be able to pay tribute to the truth and at the same time to provide Galvani with a public account of my gratitude. Aldini began writing and traveling throughout Europe and electrocuting animals and people and promoting his uncle's theories. From then on, Aldini was the face of Galvanism. Soon it became a big debate. Was the frog jumping because it once had been or was currently alive? Or was the frog jumping because two different metals created electricity? This question threw the scientists of Italy and Europe into a battle between the Voltists and the Galvanists. By the way, both sides' ideas were partially correct and partially incorrect. The Galvanists were correct that all living things use and produce electricity to make their muscles move and their nerves transmit signal. However, they're wrong in thinking that a dead creature would create its own electricity. Volta was correct in that the two different metals were creating electricity in this experiment. However, Volta missed that he was actually studying a chemical reaction. It needed a chemical, an acid or a base, to interact with the metals to create the electricity. In 1797, Galvani opposed Napoleon's conquest of Italy and lost his job and was restricted from speaking publicly as punishment. Depressed and impoverished, he died the next year from unknown causes while Dini was traveling promoting Galvanism. Three years later, Aldini had another blow, a professional one this time. Volta had created a device out of metals that would produce a shock without the different metals touching anything alive or formerly alive. Volta had taken discs of silver and zinc and piled them up with cardboard soaked in salt water between them. If you touch either Ooh, side with wet hands, you could get a shock out of this pile in a continuous current. In fact, Volta had invented the battery. Volta wrote that his research was motivated because he, quote, found myself obliged to combat the pretended animal electricity of Galvani. Although Volta's battery seemed at first to invalidate Galvani's theory, an ironic twist the battery turned into an invaluable tool, tool towards the study of electricity in living and dead systems. Aldini began to use Volta's battery to electrocute all sorts of warm-blooded animals. He then managed to manipulate the facial muscles of a decapitated ox by electrocuting parts of its brain. In 1802, Aldini started to experiment on several decapitated corpses of various criminals, and like with the ox, managed to make their facial expressions by electrifying parts of their brains. This was the first glimpse into how the brain worked. And even with these crude apparatus, he still managed to get important information. For example, Aldani was the first person to realize that one side of the hemisphere, the one hemisphere of the brain controls the opposite side of the body. Aldini also created shock, electric shock therapy. First, he conducted a, quote, long series of painful and disagreeable experiments on his own head to try to get a gauge of how powerful and useful electric jolts could be. He then gave shocks to a 27-year-old farmer named Luis Lanzarini, who was suffering from a debilitating depression and was being held in an insane asylum. According to Aldini, after several days of shocks, Lanzarini was better and was released from the asylum. Aldini wanted to use galvanism to, quote, relieve the suffering of humanity, and in that he was an inarguable success. He inspired scientists in understanding the functions and mechanics of the human brain and nervous systems, which led to the invention of innumerable drugs as well as successful surgeries. He was also the first person to successfully use electroshock therapy for depression, which is still sometimes used today. In fact, Sometimes doctors even electrically stimulate the brain directly, called deep brain stimulations, in a manner that Aldini would have found fascinating. He also felt that electric sparks would be incredibly useful in getting the heart to beat, although he's never successful with his primitive batteries. It took well over 100 years, but you could argue that Aldini is the father of the defibrillator. However, Aldini's gruesome experiments gained the public's attention so the galvanism was synonymous with using electricity to reanimate a corpse. That is why, 13 years after Aldini electrified Foster's dead body, an 18-year-old woman named Mary had heard of galvanism. Then when Mary and her friends were trying to entertain each other by writing scary stories during a cold vacation, 
They had discussion about Calvinism and reanimating corpses. Mary Shelley said that it was this discussion that inspired her to write a horror story called Frankenstein. However, unlike Dr. Frankenstein, the purpose of Aldini's experiments was, according to him, quote, not to produce reanimation, but merely to obtain a practical knowledge, a practical knowledge of how far galvanism might be employed to revert, to revive persons. In the end, Aldini's ghoulish demonstrations ended up with saving many people's lives, not to mention inspiring the first and one of the best science fiction ghost stories of all time.